Hello everybody, 10th edition is coming, new 40k, Warhammer 40,000, new 40k. Uh, we have this We have this coming and they put up a article last week about how army building works. Now I have been asked by some of my Twitch Twitch viewers uh, just to do a, a video about this, uh, about what it all means, like what, uh, how, how it's all going to work and everything. Uh, obviously I don't know, uh, this is all just working off what, what we've been told and kind of extrapolating out on uh, some of the things that we've we've already got in uh, in the game. So for instance, Arc of Omen Abaddon, which we have the Abaddon book here. So we can have a look at some of the things on there, which is going to be, uh, which they might be referring to. But also I did want to mention detachments because they mentioned detachments in here about how you muster your army. The main <laughs> i'm so i am really excited about this it's gonna be very very cool so mustering your army let's go from 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 step one so select your battle size now they've said uh 1000 1500 2000 whatever it doesn't matter what battle size you want to play if you want to play 1850 fine if you want to play 250 fine but there might be an alternative um 40k has generally not scaled particularly well so 2000 points it's always it's always been a much cleaner uh more fairer game if you like um to play at slightly larger uh, point levels so 1500 1850 2000 somewhere around there now they have said 500 point games you can play a 500 point game however if you want to play a 500 point game i would kind of nudge you towards the new boarding uh, combat patrol that they're going to do so the combat patrol games uh, should be really really good fun almost like 40k kill team if you like uh, i know kill team is a completely different game uh, and i am very excited to play some of that with some of uh, my friends going forward so that's going to be really really good now select battle size so 2000 points let's do 2000 points start your army roster okay uh, choose a faction so you're going to have to uh, pick whatever faction you like um yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. No I don't even need to explain that one. So you're going to choose a faction. You're going to pick your Tyranid faction. You're going to pick your Orc faction. You're going to pick your Necron faction, like an entire overviewing faction. Now, select detachment rules. This where, this is where they're not, they're not falling prey of something that a rule that they've already got but detachments obviously still exist in ninth edition a detachment is a battalion or a vanguard detachment or a um a, whatever the heavy support one was called anyway so they've, they've all got number of detachments and when you pick a detachment you then get a number of slots so it, it determines how many how many because all right let's go a little bit further back so a detachment in 9th edition, you have all the different um, army slots within your codex. You have troops, you have elites, you have fast attack, and you have heavy support, uh, and then uh, HQ as well. So when you pick a detachment, it would then determine how many of those things are allowed in that detachment. And that was fine. It, I liked that. Uh, I wish they'd done a little bit more with it because you could really... It, it uh, restricted and kind of challenged your army building a little bit. Um, now, with hindsight to what they've said here, like, if you wanted to pick an army, you would write your army list in 9th edition and in 8th edition, you would write your army list, I want to have this unit, I want to have this unit, I want to have this unit, blah 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 blah, right, here is my army that I've picked with all the units that I want. And then you would look at the detachments and say, well, this army fits into the battalion detachment or it fits into a uh, a vanguard detachment um or maybe i've got one too many hq so i just have to drop off an hq but ultimately you would pick an army and then you would fit it into a detachment now that's backwards <laughs> like that doesn't work so what they've done and I, I with hindsight and thinking about this i really like it choose a faction select a detachment rule and then select units now detachments now are going to be um they're going to be a heading which gives you like a title it's almost like a formation it's going to be an army formation that gives you some special rules or more importantly one special rule because i think that one of the things that they've said is they're going to try and keep it simplified 
not simple, they're going to keep it very, very simplified. So you're just going to have one special rule. So your detachment is going to have one set of special rules. So the detachments now will be, for instance, if you get the Necron Codex, the army, the faction rule for the Necrons could be something like, well, we get um, reanimation. So Necrons can reanimate. That is a special rule just for Necrons, and it's not in the core rule sort of thing. It's not a core rule. Uh, the Space Marine one, they've said that you will be able to get access to doctrines. So maybe that will be their army rule, will be the, the doctrines. Anyway, the detachment rules will be um, maybe... I, I don't know. There's no point speculating, but you will get one one special rule for that formation that you have picked, and you will have a number of formations slash detachments. Um, you'll have a number of detachments in your codex or in your uh, in the uh, the index which they're going to release in these data cards that, we, that they're going to release. You're going to have or a, a number of detachments that you're going to be able to pick. Uh, ultimately, what they've said, which is really good, is that. It's not going to get too bloated because if a detachment comes in, there's going to be a detachment that goes out. So if a campaign book comes along in six months' time and says, here you go, Space Marines, have another detachment, they're going to get rid of one. So one, so there's only going to be X number of, maybe six, I don't know, let's say six. There's only going to be six detachments for any particular army going forwards, which is great. The detachment rules are going to be on one page. The detachment then opens up access to enhancements and stratagems. Now, enhancements we've seen before, which is good. This is an interesting one. Now, the enhancements are going to... i would It sounds like they're going to replace relics and warlord traits. Um, because... You will notice down here it says promote your warlord. That's it. It doesn't give him a warlord trait. It doesn't do anything like that. You don't you don't give him a trait. You don't give him any extra gear. He is just your warlord. So, yeah. So that, that that's really cool. Now, if we just turn this off for a second, click like that. If we have a look at the Arcs of Omen Abaddon book. We have in here some boarding actions enhancements. So we can we can guess about what sort of things the enhancements are going to be once you've picked your detachment. So when you've picked your detachment, when you've chosen uh, how you want your army to fight is probably the best way of thinking about it. So you've picked your Space Marines and now the the detachment that they've, um, that they've revealed so far is the Gladius Strike Force, which they've said might be the optimum way that Ultramarines fight, okay? fair enough so extrapolating from that i'm guessing they're going to have a way that blood angels like a detachment which fits the blood angels a little bit more a detachment that fits the space wolves maybe or a detachment that fits the dark pharaohs haha -ha. anyway um and then once you've picked that it's then going to open up your enhancements and your stratagems now your stratagems are over here uh the the, the, the boarding action stratagems are just bas the basic um core re-rolly ones there are some more in the other books, in the later books. I don't have the new newer books yet. I'm still working off Abaddon. Um, the orders are waiting, as I'm sure a lot of yours are as well. So some of these enhancements. So we have, before the battle generate uh, starting command point step, you start with two more command points. So that's a, uh, a an enhancement that you might be able to give to, uh, to, to one of the characters, to one of the uh, units or whatever. But notice that none of these are particularly that none of these particularly feel overpowered none of these are uh, when you attack roll 10 extra dice in addition they are all also minus four uh, armor penetration in addition you can also infiltrate in addition you can say so that in addition was like the plague of ninth edition um, so that's that's all gone so these are really really nice simple enhancements which you will open up once you picked which detachment you want to which uh, which detachment you want to fight under sort of thing so these enhancements are going to replace your warlord traits they're going to replace your stratagems and i don't think you're going to be putting these all over your army either you'll pick one you might be allowed to pick might be allowed to pick two but i mean up here it says your warlord can be given a single boarding party enhancement so that's it like you get one of these enhancements and if you get six within your detachment rules to pick from there you go. So the choice automatically is being made even easier after that. So that's great. So if we go back to 
go back to here again. So once you've done that, you then get to select your units. And like I said before, when you were when you were writing army lists, so I wrote I played in a lot of tournaments in 8th edition. I haven't played in any tournaments in 9th edition, but I played a lot in 8th. 9th uh, edition kind of came out during COVID and I it, I d never quite got back into it, so I was I was concentrating a lot more on hobbying and golden demon and things like that. So like I said, you used to pick your armies uh, you'd pick what uh, what units you wanted, tended to be the strongest units in the game at the time, and then you would fit them into the army. So now, um, you don't have to worry about fitting them in at all. Now all you have to do is you have to worry about... There we go, picking units. So you need at least one character. So a character is... Uh, not a named character so an epic hero is a named character so an epic hero is something like the silent king or uh, Anrakai the traveler or cypher or the lion when he comes out or as he's pictured there Gulliman um, so that's not a character a character is something like a librarian uh, it will be a captain it will be a necron cryptech it will be something like that sort of be a person who leads the army um, now whether they are going to put Things like Master of Executions in character slots, I don't really know, doesn't really matter um, because all it says is at least one character and then up to three of the same data sheet. So you can put literally whatever you like in. Uh, if you want to put three characters in, that's absolutely fine because you just need at least one of them and then you can just put in three if you want to. Like you can put in up to three of the same character. So you could if you wanted. Uh, I put a I put a joke. Uh, message out on Twitter and uh, Instagram the other day saying, oh, I could run uh, three Catacomb Command Barges, three Overlords, three Lords, three Royal Wardens and three Cryptex. There we go, there's my army. I mean, it would be absolutely atrocious because I wouldn't have any capability to kind of go out into the army uh, battlefield and like take objectives or do, do uh, secondary objectives or things like that, but it's that kind of thing. So you need at least one character. Uh, you can have uh, a epic hero, uh, so Abaddon for instance, and then the rule of three is very much still in the game, so you can have up to three of the date, same data sheet unless they have the battle line or dedicated transport keyword, so on the data cards which are going to be coming out, in fact we can go back to we can go back to here because they put a data cards in, there it is so on the new data cards that are coming out, the data cards will have on them and they haven't listed the, they haven't listed the, uh, the the full data card. But on the data card, you will notice some keywords down at the bottom, um, and they had a battle line on them as well. So battle lines will be uh, basically just troops. Uh, troops, the the average, uh, what the armory is averagely made up of. So they will be the battle line troops. So you can have six of those. So. Uh, infantry, uh, Imperial Guard Infantry Squad, you could have 60 Imperial Guard Infantry if you wanted. Um, if Gene Stealers come in, um, if Gene Stealers come in units of 20 and they are battle line, you could have 120 Gene Stealers if you wanted. Something like that. Necron Warriors will be battle line and they, they come in 20, so I could have 120 Necron Warriors. That's to the extreme, um, and I think with the way that they are writing the game now uh, particularly with how the data slate works uh, and the data sheet works let's see if we can just pull up a data slate quickly uh, have I got one here I'm sure I had one should have been should have got uh, more no I haven't got one here easily to find uh, Tell you what, let's go and quickly find one. So the data slates, because the data slates have got really cool things happening on them, and they do have the abilities, you're you're not going to want to have 120. Um, you're not going to want to have 120 Imperial Guard infantry because you're not going to get access to all the cool abilities which are going to be in the... There we go. Uh, no, 40k. There we go, the reveal. Come 
come on, there we go. So down here, uh, infantry, uh, faction keywords are Tyranids. So the ability down here, if you if you just have Imperial Guard infantry and you just have 140 Imperial Guard infantry and you're sad that you can't now have 140 Imperial Guard infantry, I don't think you're going to want to because they're going to have access to one ability. You're going to want to have access to more abilities in the game, so you're going to want to diversify what units go in the game as well because the more units you have the more abilities you're going to have the more kind of intricacies you're going to be able to play with on the battlefield now this one in particular if you fall but if you fin if somebody finishes their move within nine inches you can then kind of interrupt and you can move move themselves uh is really interesting really cool idea stops the you go i go little thing uh, we've talked about before and um yeah, it's just gonna be so so good. So you don't. I don't think one. Basically, the takeaway from this is don't be worried by the fact that you're only allowed to take uh, up to three of the same, same day to sleep uh, and up to six uh, battle line. I know some of you will might have like 140 um, Imperial Guard infantry. Cool, you've got 140 Imperial Guard infantry. Um, so you could maybe have them count as something else in the game um, but you'll you'll only be able to use 60 in the game but there's going to be so many other things which you will want in your army um, so yeah don't worry don't worry it's all going to be cool it's going to be very very exciting so that is ultimately I don't want to kind of go on for too long uh, that is ultimately how we are going to be picking our armies going forwards uh, I just wanted to mention uh, the detachment rules uh, and how that might be how that might be working uh, they are, some of you have uh, have also said well how's that going to work with chaos demons uh, because chaos demons can go with chaos space marines um, and also things like brood brothers um, drakari as well drakari because they're, they're, they're not a single faction uh, for drakari I think it's going to be very very easy because it, choose the faction well I'm going to choose drakari and then the detachment rules will be well here that here is a special rule for your detachment and then when you get to selecting the units well you can just pick what you like like it doesn't matter you can mix and match all the um all the homunculus uh, with the witch cults with the cabalites uh, so that's not going to make a difference now they uh, when it comes to allies in terms of chaos demons they've said uh, right down at the bottom actually i think there we go. Uh, there are exceptions for the classic cross-faction combos like summoning demons, free blade knights, or brew brothers, which is great. Uh, I would imagine also in here will be, please, will be uh, imperial agents because I want to do my inquisit inquisitorial uh, warband uh, retinue uh, 40k army, which is really going to be really, really cool. Anyway, uh, I hope that has answered some of the questions that uh, came up on Twitch yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to get this video out. I'm um, sorry a little bit for kind of bouncing around and having, getting very, very excited here and there. Uh, but uh, there you go. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. You can catch me on Twitch. I'm about to go live today, actually. So um, you can catch me on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv forward slash Chris Rossin. Please drop me a follow on there. And you can drop me a follow on Twitter and Instagram as well at the same name, at Chris Frossin. And uh, if you do like this kind of content, consider following and subscribing on Patreon as well. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, it's so cool. They have actually today, they have said that we'll be able to play 40k for the first time at Warhammer Fest, which is like four weeks away. So very, very exciting. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.